What's up, everybody? It's the Flow Master here, Jacob, um, and we're here on New Year's Eve. It's December 31st uh, at 5.50 p.m. You may be asking, why are you making a YouTube tutorial? Shouldn't you be out uh, having fun and partying? Yes, I probably should, but here we are. There's no time for dilly-dallying, so let's get right into the video. Um, so in this video, we're going to be going over how to query for events on the Flow blockchain, both on testnet and mainnet. It's actually a lot easier than you think, and this will probably end up being one of the shorter videos I do. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, the only prerequisite that you'll need for this video um, is the usual things that you need. So you know, you're at this point, you probably have all these installed anyway. But if you go to onflow.org, um, just make sure that you have the Flow CLI installed. So you go to documentation. Uh, the Flow CLI, and then make sure that you have the Flow CLI installed on your computer. Um, so you'll just follow the instructions for each one of these. I, for Mac, I use this one, the pre-built library. I don't use Homebrew. For Linux, it's just one line, and for Windows, it's one line. Um, and you'll know you've installed it if when you type in... Actually, let me make this bigger for everybody. So you know that you'll have installed it if on your Windows, when you type in Flow version, if it comes up with the version number. So right now, I'm using 30.1, and if the future, it might be a different version, but it should be pretty much the same. Okay. So in your VS code, what you're going to do, um, we're going to make a new file and just call this main.js. So we're just going to um, basically have a simple node script that just creates these events and logs it to our terminal, and that's about it. Um, now, in order to actually interact with the Flow blockchain, so I'm looking at my notes on the right here, if you see me looking over here, but in order to actually interact with it, we're going to need FCL. So we're actually going to need to import um, the, the uh, at onflow uh, FCL library. So inside of our terminal, we can do something where we do um, npm init, and this will make a uh, base package.json for us so that we can install dependencies into our project. Um, so I'm just, you can just press enter on all these. It's not going to matter. Uh, you don't have to type in anything for these. And it's going to say, is this okay? And you press yes. And it, you'll notice it creates a package.json for us. Um, so this is the same thing as if we had just if you just copy and paste this in your project. But it's much easier if you just type npm init. All right. So let's go ahead and install a dependency. So let's do npm install. And the uh, dependency we're going to install is at onflow slash fcl. Um, so maybe I'll make this a little bigger just in case anyone can see it, but at onflow slash fcl. And so if we uh, npm install, it's going to do some uh, fancy stuff for a bit. Hopefully this won't take too long. Boom, it doesn't take too long. And so you'll notice it creates a package lock.json, and now our dependencies include add onflow slash fcl. So that's awesome. So if we go into our script, um, one thing we can just do initially is just do like console.log, like hello world. Um, or let's just do my name, hello Jacob. Because uh, I'm cooler than the world. And so then if we save this file um, and go into our terminal, if we do, uh, let's just clear everything. So if we do node space main.js, um, and I'm doing main.js because that's the name of our file over here, and we run this, you'll notice it logs hello world. So when you run node and then the name of the file, it's just going to run whatever's in that thing. So we're just going to basically run a script that reads the events from the blockchain. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is const uh, fcl equals require um, at on flow such fcl. And what this is going to do is um, FCL is basically a way for us in our JavaScript code to interact with the Flow blockchain. So in order to actually read the events, we need to talk to the blockchain, right? And so that's exactly what FCL is for. Now, um, the other thing that's, that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to configure this to either testnet or mainnet. So for this video, I'm going to use uh, be using mainnet. So the way you do that is you, you so this FCL allows you to read the blockchain, right? But you have to basically configure it. And so we do fcl.config. Uh, and then we dot put. Now inside this dot put, we're going to tell FCL either to look at mainnet, testnet, local net, whatever it is, right? So the way you do that is you type in access node dot API, comma, and then another string. And this string is going to be um, the the URL to either testnet or mainnet of Flow blockchain. So in this case, I'm going to be using mainnet. So we're going to do HTTPS uh, like so, access mainnet. This is the link for mainnet at least. Beta dot on flow dot org. Okay, so when we type in this, uh, you know, this will actually uh, make our FCL point to Flow Mainnet. Um, and if you wanted to do testnet, that's a little different. Um, and I'll explain that at the end of the video. So uh, I'll do another dot put here um, in case you want to do a uh, testnet. But so it'll be access node dot API, um, and then there'll be another testnet string here. But for this video, we're going to be doing using Mainnet. All right. So uh, what we can do is let's just make a new function called const fetch events, like so. Um, we're going to make it asynchronous because we're going to be calling stuff. Uh, we're going to be calling things in the blockchain, so we're going to need to use a wait at some points. Um, and then let's just like inside of here, console.log, like hello. Um, and then at, at the bottom, let's just make a call to fetch events. So fetch events, like so. And so if we run this file, if we if we just clear everything and then uh, do node main.js, 
we should see that it prints hello, right? So um, we call fetch events, and all fetch events does console log hello. All right. So this is where we get into like the main part of the video. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get the latest block from the blockchain. So so what does that mean? Well. The latest block is a set. Okay, so when you think about the blockchain, right? Think of it as like a huge tree. So when you modify the blockchain or you make changes to the blockchain, um, all that's happening in blocks. So when you send a transaction on the blockchain, um, a bunch of transactions get put together in what's called a block. And you can literally think of a block as like a square, and you put a bunch of transactions in them that all get sent to change the blockchain together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fetch the latest block, which is literally the last thing that changed the blockchain, and get its current height. Now, what a height is, is it's the, the height of the block in the graph that we're talking about. So what that basically is, is the height, the latest block dot height will basically represent the last po the last like time that the blockchain was modified. Or like at the last level in the graph that the blockchain was modified. So we can get the latest block by doing, and I'll explain why we're getting the latest block in a second. But we can do const latest block equals await. So that's uh, because we're using await. That's why we have to make this an asynchronous function. Um, FCL.send, uh, parentheses, and then uh, brackets. And then, uh, or what is it? Square brackets, right? And then we're going to do FCL.getBlock. And all you pass into here is true, uh, like so. And then after we do this, we're going to dot then uh, fcl.decode, and that's that's how we get the latest block. So the reason that I'm doing dot, uh, dot then fcl.decode is because this is going to return a bunch of like fancy stuff, and dot then fcl.decode uh, makes it like readable. So we can even like console.log the latest block here, um, and let's see what it prints to the uh, to the console. So if we do node main.js, um, it's going to here's the latest block, right? So it has a height. It has a timestamp of when this block was last, uh, you know, w when it was sent, the ID, um, the, its parent's ID, and then a bunch of stuff in here that, like, we don't need to worry about, right? And the signature. So this height's really important because when we want to get events on the blockchain, we want to get events from point A to point B. So you specify a range. Now, we can we can come up with an arbitrary start range, right? Uh, we, we, so, so the process is you want to start at the end range. Um, so like, you know, if we're going from, let's say like 10 to 15, it's not, it's going to be much bigger than that. It's going to be like, you know, two, 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 one, 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 three, zero to, to this, right? But when you get the end range, what you can do is get the latest block dot height. So that's the end range. And then to get the start range of where we want to get the events from, we can do the end range minus like a hundred and that will get all the events in that time, in that time frame from height, from height A to height B. So what we can do um, is we can say uh, let end oh uh, let end equals latest block dot height and what this will do is get this height right here that we're seeing so this is the ending point of our interval and we can then say let start oh oops we can then say let start equals end um, minus a hundred so something like that and what we can even do is we can come up here and just make a global variable called like let range. And just specify this to 100, and we can just make this range. So anytime you want to change the range, you would just change this number. So what this is going to do is quite literally, it's going to it's going to allow us to have an interval from start to end of where we want to get our events from. So now let's actually get our events. So we're going to do const response <coughs> equals um, await fcl.send, like so, um, and then we're going to say fcl.get events, like that. And now this is where things get a little interesting. So we're going to have something in this first parameter that I'm going to leave like all X's right now. And then we're going to do start end. Okay. And then after this is done, we can just, uh, we'll do something later. Okay. So FCL.get events gets all the events. Now the first parameter is the event you actually want to get. And the start and ending are just the time frames you want to get um, all the events from. So let's say the start is five and the ending is 10. It'll get all the events that are specified here that were in that, in that height range. Okay. So, this is where things are a little interesting. So on flow, the way that you represent um, like an identifier, so you have to pass in an event identifier. So this is going to be an event identifier. So what is an ident event, uh, event identifier? Well, on flow, the identifier is something usually looks like a dot, so that literally a dot, and then contract address that that type is defined in, then contract name, and then dot the type. So for example, if you have like an NFT collection and it's named collection, it would be a 
dot the name of the contract that the collection exists in, the contract name, and then like collection, right? So in this case, it's going to be a dot, the contract address the event is being emitted from, the contract name the event is being emitted from, and the, and the type, which is basically just the name of the event. So let's say, for example, we wanted to get all the tokens deposited events from flow token, right? So flow token is a contract that exists. We can actually look this up together. Let's go to core contracts. Um, so we can actually look at the flow token contract on mainnet. So let's go ahead and do that together. Um, the flow view source, let's change this to mainnet. And this is just how I look up my, uh, my contracts. So this is actually flow token on mainnet. This is literally what it looks like. So you'll see there's an event in here called tokens deposited. So let's say we want to query for all these tokens deposited events. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So let, how do we do that? Well, we need a contract address. So let's say let contract address equals um, that address, right? So that's that's where this is deployed. That it's to this account. The contract name, which is flow token. So let's go ahead and say let contract name equals flow token. And then let's go ahead and say let um, type or like event name equals uh, tokens 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 deposited. Oh my god. Okay, tokens deposited. So then what we can do is inside this event identifier, we can open up these little um, back ticks, which basically let you like type variables into strings and say a dot and then money sign brackets. So this lets you type variables inside the string here. Um, contract address um, dot and then open up another one. Uh, contract name dot and open up another one and then event name. I, I realized I misspelled this, so it should be event name. Okay. And so this will get all the events, uh, f you know, that are the tokens deposited from that uh, address, right? So then what we can do afterwards is we can actually get the events from this response. And the way that you do that is you say const events equals response. So this will actually give you all the events. And then let's just go ahead and console.log the events. Boom. All right. So if we go to our terminal, clear this, and we do node main.js, um, you can see that, oh, so it looks like there was actually none in the recent block. Uh, let's get rid of this console log just so we can view the uh, events more easily and more clearly. But let's run this again. And for some reason, it looks like there's nothing coming up. So maybe there just aren't any events being passed in. Um, so maybe we should go ahead and change our range to like 100 or something. And let's see if this if anything comes up here. Okay, so I must have put in a typo. Um, uh, okay, so the reason I messed up is because for some reason, I, it's just it's a small bug, but this contract address actually can't have the OX in it. So you just get rid of the OX. Um, that seems to be the only issue. So if we were to go ahead and um, rerun our node uh, main.js here, you could see that all of the events will come up now. So each of these little objects is an event that was emitted, um, which is really cool, right? Because we can now view the information about the events. So some of you may be asking, well, um, you know, how do we actually get the variables, right? Because like in, if you look at our contract, um, I can actually increase the font size a little bit. But you can see token, tokens deposit has two variables here. So an amount and a two. So how do we actually read that? Well, if we look at one of them, for example, uh, you know, we can see the block ID, the block height, timestamp, type, transaction ID. None of these seem to have those variables. So let's actually look at the payload because maybe that has it. And spoiler alert, it does because I'm a genius. So let's console.log events. And let's just get like the first event, right? So it's, it's, what it's doing is it's returning a huge array of all the events. So let's just get the first event that it returned. So add zero. And we'll do dot payload, right? And so it's going to return one event's payload. So let's go ahead and clear and node.main.js. And here it is. So there's a type, it's an event, the value, the ID, and then fields. Okay, well, let's go ahead and look at value.fields. So dot value dot fields. Let's save that, clear, and don't make this again. And here we go, here are the fields. So there's the name, which is the amount, and the two. The amount was $0, and the two was an optional type. Um, so if we wanted to, for example, uh, look at the two, um, you know, we could just access this value by doing, so this is the second element. So, you know, we would just do like at two, um, cause it's, oh no, at one, sorry. Cause it's the second thing in the array, um, dot value, dot value, right? So let's just do like dot value, dot value. And let's just, uh, clear and node main.js again. And it says the, 
Oh, so maybe, oh, so there it is. So the address and then value is this value. So you can sort of game it, but what I would do is like for your own projects, whatever fields you're trying to do, I would just go to events at zero dot payload and then look at the, the dot value and then the dot fields. And what you can do is um, you can see all of the um, fields uh, in there um, just right here. So that's how you would do that. Um, now, the one other thing I would like to show you is the uh, testnet. So let me actually um, do that right now uh, because I want to show you how you would do this on testnet. Um, so I'm just finding the testnet URL uh, really quickly. So um, the way that you would do this is uh, um, here it is. Okay. So you would do .access node .api, and then the uh, the address for this one or the URL for this one is HTTPS um, the colon and then two slashes, and then you would do access testnet um, dot on flow dot org so i just wanted to confirm that okay so for example if we commented this out and instead put in the testnet um well this would change right so okay so let, let's let's see why this would break so if we tried to run this look it's going to break um and it's because it, there's no there's nothing here right so even if we try to log all the events um it's going to give us a problem um and as a, I, i'm sure a lot of you could could figure out why but the reason is because on, on testnet the address for flow token is totally different right it's a different address so if we go back to our core contracts, you know, I was using the mainnet, but if we, we, we would have to use the testnet for flow token. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that in. Oh, oops. Um, didn't mean to do that. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this testnet address. Bring it in. And get rid of the 0x. And now everything should work. So if we um, do node main.js, you'll see it returns all the events, and these are all in testnet now. So that's how you would configure it for testnet. All right, so that concludes the video. That's how to query for events on, on mainnet and testnet. I hope that helped, and uh, happy New Year's to everybody. Um, this channel has grown a lot in the past few months. I started in early October. It's now been officially three months, and we're wrapping up the year um, with around 150 subscribers. So it's been a ton of uh, amazing things, and I've got a lot of positive feedback on all the videos. So thank you all so much, and uh, enjoy the new year. Have a great start to the new year, and enjoy time with uh, friends and family, and I'll catch you soon in the next video. Bye.